Hey, what's up, VC? It's Steve again, Harmless Rebel. Uh, we're gonna do a country music update this time. Been kind of on a country music kick for the last couple weeks, and uh, Billy Hurst just left. Uh, he was here for about a day and a half, and uh, we got talking about a lot of country, and I just it's been a country kind of week. Uh, so uh, let's just kind of jump into this one. I've talked about this band a little bit. I've gotten more and more into them. Um, it's kind of hard to describe this band. Um, they're one of the red clay bands from Texas. Um, a little bit of country, a little bit of southern rock, a little bit of country rock. They, they kind of mix it all together. Um, you'll hear two or three different styles on one of their albums, but really in a good way. Um, I was really stoked to get this album too. Um, you know, these guys usually go for 30, 40 bucks. And somebody posted it online for 11 or $12 uh, sealed. Um, so again, I was really stoked. But this is uh, Fire Water. I believe this was the second album um, from Whiskey Myers. Uh, but this has their biggest hit on it uh, so far, which is uh, Ballad of a Southern Man. Um, just really killer song, really killer album. And uh, definitely one I recommend to you. Uh, next up, I showed this one a, a while back when I first got it, but I pulled it out and spun it again last week. Um, I've been going through, kind of doing like Brandon is doing, or has done, and I'm going through my collection and pulling out stuff that's beat up and, and stuff that needs to be replaced and uh, stuff that, frankly, I just don't feel like I need in my collection, what I'm not going to listen to and whatnot. Um, and I pulled, ran across this again and pulled it out and gave it another spin. Just an absolute classic album. Um, this was the uh, limited uh, Vinyl Me Please edition, but this is uh, uh, Coal Miner's Daughter from Loretta Lynn. Um, just an absolute classic. And and uh, Vinyl Me Please, man, they, they've just been doing a really killer job um, with all their releases, but they've been releasing some really classic country stuff, and the pressings have all been amazing. Um, speaking of the Red Clay guys, again, this is one I've had for quite some time. Um, I got kind of on a, a Cody Jeans kick. Actually, let me grab the... I've got a couple more of his albums in here. I should have put these in order before I started showing stuff. Make sure this is it. So, uh, Cody Jinx's uh, new album uh, came out a few months back, and uh, we finally got the the vinyl pressing uh, a few months after that. So, um, he calls it two albums. It was released as a, I guess, a double album um, or a triple album set uh, on vinyl. If you bought it on CD, you had to buy them individually, though, but... Uh, the first one was uh, uh, The Wanting, which I love the artwork for that. And then uh, After the Fire was the other album. It's uh, two and a half, uh, excuse me, two, uh, five sides, the six side is an etching, which is something all of his albums are. Um, pretty much all of his albums are three sides with an etching. This one is five sides uh, with an etching. And... Uh, I feel like he should, he could have weeded some stuff out. Um, I like the album, um, the albums. There's uh, songs on here I love. Um, I feel like he could have weeded out uh, two sides worth of stuff though, and done a three-sided album like he usually does. Um, if I were to have done a top ten list for last year of country, I don't know that this would have made it just because of all the songs on here that I just feel should have been left off of it. But uh, I still, there's like I said, there's songs on here I love. Um, this one is like a, a blue and black smoke um, th that you got if you pre-ordered it. Um, still, um, definitely worth having in the collection. And honestly, Cody Jinx right now, um, between Cody Jinx and Tyler Childers, they're the top of country music right now, in my opinion. They're the ones to go and check out. Um, so... As I was listening to that, I just kind of got in a Cody Jinx mood. I ended up pulling out uh, I'm Not the Devil. Um, a few years old. I can't remember what year this one was released. Um, but this is just an amazing album. Uh, 
uh, highly recommend picking this one up. And then uh, probably my second favorite of his albums. I know this is Billy's favorite. We, we talked about this quite a bit. But this is Less Wise. Less Wise, I, I think it originally came out in 2014. Um, this is the, the modified reissued 2017 version. I honestly don't know what the difference is. The original had a black cover on it. It was never released on vinyl. And I've never seen it on CD. I've only seen this version. So I would like to get a copy of the original just to compare the two. Um, but just the song, uh, Hippies and Cowboys, uh, makes this worth the money. Uh, but this whole album, Love Letters and a Cigarette, um, Less Wise, Last Call for the Blues, just an amazing, amazing, amazing country music album. Next up, pulled this one out again while I was going through the collection, cleaning stuff uh, or uh, just pulling stuff out. Um, haven't listened to this in a while. Um, she got, she really got big with her second album, uh, which is also really good. I actually prefer this album. This is my favorite from Patty Loveless, but uh, this is her debut. Um, just a killer album. She's been around for years. She just put an out an album three or four years ago. These first three were really the ones I love, though. Um, I want to say right around the time of her third album, uh, she had like a polyp on her vocal cords and had to get vocal cord surgery, which is not uncommon. Um, but it changed her voice. And uh, while it didn't do a, a damage to her voice, she still sounded great. I really loved her voice on these first three albums. And these first three albums were just straight up neo-traditional. Um, if you're into Keith Whitley or George Strait, it's that style of country. Uh, and they're, they, these were definitely my favorites from her, but still a uh, really killer album. And again, uh, recommended. I don't think there's any that I'm gonna show here that I wouldn't recommend to you. Uh, next up, uh, finally found a really nice copy. Uh, I got this in the shrink. It was stone mint, the vinyl. Um, I didn't realize the big old crease in the in the corner until after I took the shrink off. But this is uh, um, Black on Black, uh, Waylon Jennings. Um, you just can't go wrong with uh, the Waylon albums. Even, I, I can't, this is one guy that, I don't remember Waylon really having any bad albums, you know. I love Johnny Cash, but he had some rough albums in the 80s. Um, I love Merle Haggard. He had some rough albums in the 80s. Even his 80 albums are 80s albums are still pretty good. I think this one was 1980 as well. 82. Um, just a, a killer album. And definitely 82 playing off the back on black. You got black on black. So Next up, John or Hank Williams Jr. live at Cabo Hall, Detroit, 1969. Um, I am definitely a fan of the late 70s to mid 80s. Uh, Bo Cephas, but I still like this early stuff when he was kind of riding his dad's coattails and going for that sound. Um, but still, just a, a really nice set. This is an 80s reissue. Um, but if you like that early traditional um, Hank Williams Jr. that he was doing through about 75, 76, um, you'll definitely like this. If you prefer the Bo Cephas stuff, um, maybe not so much. Uh, again, Whiskey Myers. Um, I've only given this one a couple spins. I still need to give this one a little bit more love. It's it's right the same vein though, a mix of country music, country rock, southern rock, all kind of uh, put together. But this is their their brand new album. It's been out for maybe three or four months now. Um, ran across a copy of it. Um, again, I recommend grabbing any of the whiskey uh, Whiskey Myers stuff. Uh, pulled this one out again. Um, I bought this last time uh, Billy was in town, and uh, that had nothing to do with why I pulled it out. I just I was digging through the stuff and was in the mood for Co. and pulled out um, the first ten years. Uh, a re really nice greatest hits comp for that uh, first or uh, from the seventies. Next up, an absolute classic. Again, I found it, this really beautiful copy. Um, the copy I had was was pretty rough. This is just an amazing album, though. Um, this time from Waylon Jennings, um, 1974. Um, just beautiful. Uh, slow moving outlaw. This time, heaven and hell, walking Mona. Uh, slow, uh, slow rolling low. Uh, Louisiana woman, pick up, a, pick up the tempo. Um, 
not a bad track on here. I think you could have done a little bit better with that album cover. I've never been a fan of that. Um, but absolutely love this album. A little bit of Bo Cephas. High notes. This was 80, I think. 82 again. Yep. If Heaven Ain't a Lot Like Dixie, a huge monster hit for him. Um, let's see. I think that was the one big hit off of here. He does a very, very, very bad version of Norwegian Wood on this. It drives me crazy. Um, other than that, this is a great album, though. Um, it's funny. Uh, Billy and I were actually talking about him. Um, if Heaven Ain't a Lot Like Dixie is one of his songs. I don't know why he played so many covers and so many did so many um songs from other people most of his biggest hits were the songs that he wrote um i don't know if it was label pressure that he put all this other stuff on there um i feel like if he would have done more um of his own songs uh he would have had a lot more hits and he had a lot of hits don't get me wrong uh, i feel like we missed out on a lot though because of all the covers and all the other crap that he put on his uh on his albums I'm back, guys. Sorry about that. Um, somebody came to the door, and then I had to take a phone call from my mom. So uh, I think I left off on that Whiskey Myers, so we'll just uh, continue on. I got a couple Johnny Cash. Um, first up from 1980, this is kind of towards the end of, of the great Johnny Cash records. Um, you know, once we got into the mid-'80s, um, he was playing some electric stuff. There were synths and... and and uh, drum machines, and, and although the writing was still good, I just couldn't, I wasn't a fan of the music. Um, here in 1980, though, he was still playing, it was just traditional Johnny Cash. Uh, this is Rockabilly Blues, and that, that title just kind of says it all. Um, really killer uh, album from 1980. And then uh, one of his 70s, uh, just another killer class uh a killer album hello i'm johnny cash or a, hello i'm johnny cash um this has if i were a carpenter uh which is a was a pretty big hit for he and june carter um i love their version of that song it, it's so good i that was pretty much the biggest hit off of here see ruby fall i think uh, got a little traction as well maybe to beat the devil but uh regardless just a, a solid album front to back Next up, a little bit of Dixie Chicks. I've shown them a few times. Um, this one is Fly. Um, they were just... They had that three-album spree where it was just full of hits. This one, the biggest hit was probably Cowboy Take Me Away or uh, uh, Hello, Mr. Heartbreak was pretty big, too. But uh, just another solid album. Shortly after this, I think it's kind of when they fell out of favor because of old girls' comments about uh, George Bush, which I never really got got all the hate but whatever uh, next up a little bit of uh, Jason Isbell I've talked about him quite a bit um, I was missing a couple of his 400 unit uh, records and thankfully he's repressed them on under his label uh, this I believe was their debut um, where Jason Isbell solo stuff is more country with a little bit of Americana um, his 400 unit stuff is more on the rock side Americana rock um, kind of feel to it. I like it all. Um, and the cool thing about Jason Isbell is I, I saw him live last year. When you see him live, he plays all of it. Um, I think, and I think even when he was touring for Southeastern, I believe the guys from the 400 unit, I think they're always his backing band. Um, so, but like I said, the 400 unit stuff definitely has a more uh, rock feel to it. Still country, um, still Americana, but definitely a little more rocking than the uh, straight up country of his... Uh, um, the stuff that he's released as a solo artist. Uh, next up, just uh, one of the most important people in, in outlaw country that that sadly um, never rose to the fame of Waylon or Willie or Merle Haggard, even though he wrote huge hits for all of those guys. Um, when I get my wings, uh, Billy Joe Shaver, um, just an absolute master, uh, an amazing songwriter. Um, it's pretty much guaranteed that if you like traditional, out, especially outlaw country music, you've heard his songs, <coughs> whether they were sung by him or not, but just an absolutely amazing album. He doesn't have a bad album. If you run across anything by Billy Joe Shaver, grab it. 
it. Especially if you can get it for a decent price, because they go for crazy, crazy money. Um, speaking of crazy money, I got real lucky on this one. Um, I actually won this in uh, uh, an auction, uh, not an auction, a raffle. I think I paid five bucks for one uh, one ticket. Um, this was uh, real limited on Vinyl Me Please. They only pressed 500 of them, and he's since become a huge star. Um, but this is Coulter Wall, Songs of the Plains. This is his second full length. Um, Billy and I talked about him quite a bit uh, while he was here. I prefer this album. His voice changed on this album. It, um, I feel like he either went to a vocal coach or uh, uh, I think Brent Cobb produced this. Brent Cobb really sat down with him and worked on um, his voice, but his voice just sounds more refined. It sounds a lot better on this album. Um, and I also love, this is more in the vein of Marty Robbins, the, the traditional plains, uh, Western, Western country. Um, and, and I love it. Um, highly recommend this one. And like I said, I was lucky enough. These things are going for like 90 bucks now. This one is the, the Vinyl Me Please on um, clear, um, clear yellow vinyl or clear gold vinyl, whatever they, I don't know how they advertised it. Um, next up, this is one that I saw on Record Store Day. Um, so Walmart had a bunch of albums for 15 bucks on Record Store Day. This was one of them. I didn't grab it. And then I told Billy about it. He bought a copy, told me how good it was, and told me I had to go buy it. So I went and grabbed it. Um, so this has some of my favorite songs. This is Tim McGraw, The Biggest Hits. Um, so his first three albums are some of the best albums of the 90s, which is you know why he, he sells out two or three shows in every city that he goes to. But uh, you can't get his first three albums on vinyl yet, which makes no sense to me. Um, they were released by Curb Records. This is Curb Records, so they are putting out some of his stuff. But Indian Outlaw, Don't Take the Girl, I Like It, I Love It. Um, you can't get those on vinyl. And not just that, his second album, There's every song on that album is a hit. It just blows me away they haven't released that. But regard, at least I have a few of the songs that I love on this album right here. If uh, you can still find it at, at Walmart, I do see it from time to time. I highly recommend grabbing it while you can. That one's on like, I think they call it mocha colored vinyl. It's like baby shit colored um, vinyl. Uh, next up. Um, so I showed this when I first got it and I talked about how I wasn't a fan. It's slowly grown on me. Um, and I really do like it now. Um, so this is Whitey Morgan in the 78s, um, Hard Times and White Lines. Um, so he is real famous. He is very much the Waylon Jennings of today. His voice, his performance, he sounds like Waylon Jennings. And uh, <coughs> that's not necessarily a bad thing. His live uh, uh, shows are, they're just known everywhere. Everybody, that's what everybody talks about. He is the guy to go see live. And his live record is by far uh, one of the best country albums of the last decade. Um, and, and the reason I had issues with this is it's, it's kind of a slow starter. Um, the production's not great either. It, it doesn't bother me uh, as much as I know Billy really didn't like the production. But I, the, the songs are just real a little slower. They're not... Um, he, he's known for the more honky-tonk style. Uh, and these, these have that a little bit, but they're definitely not as honky-tonk as his, his earlier albums. But still, highly recommend get. I don't even know if this is st you can still get this on vinyl. It's, it, this was a couple years ago. Uh, yeah, this came out in 2018. Um, cool thing about him, though, is he, he still writes most of his stuff. Let's see. He wrote all but... And he brings in amazing... So, let's see. Uh, Whitey Morgan and Ward Davis. Ward Davis is amazing. Uh, Travis Meadows is a great songwriter. So it's he co-writes and he brings in amazing co-writers as well. Um, again, recommend this one. And I don't think I would have recommended. I don't think I recommended it when I showed it the first time. Next up, just a classic album. I was lucky enough to get a signed copy. Uh, Vince Gill, When Love Finds You. Um, just an absolute masterpiece. This was 94. Um, his album right before this is actually my favorite album, but still... Um, really happy to have this in the collection. Um, I believe this one was a Cracker Barrel exclusive. Um, I got it through Universal Media, through their website, where you could get the signed copies. Uh, speaking of 
um, Cracker Barrel exclusives. I believe that's the only way you can get this one. And these are going for 40, 50 bucks. Now I was lucky. Mine has, you can't, you can't even see it, but there's like some little marks on the back of it. And I got it at my used record shop for 16 bucks. But every time I see it, it's 40, 45 bucks uh, open, not even sealed. Um, so if you run across this in Cracker Barrel, grab it. But this is his uh, Willie's 2000, uh, 2010 release, Country Music. Um, this is the only vinyl release that it's had. And this was last year. Let's see, 2019. So uh, if you run across that, grab it while you can. Let's see, just a couple left amazing album and this song by itself is worth uh the price of the album i got this for really cheap i got this for eight or nine bucks again this is another one that's hard to find and usually goes for 30 bucks plus but this is john austin paycheck uh johnny paycheck um i don't know why he went by john austin there because that's it's not his name neither is johnny paycheck but uh um, 11 months and 29 days that song is amazing found this uh mint copy it's got the, the cutout but otherwise this thing is mint it, it's really one of his best this was probably the top three um johnny paycheck albums in my opinion um just so good let's see next up a little johnny cash just got a couple left um this one is uh four uh yeah american four the man comes around just pulled this out to spin it again. I was listening to this while I was going through my country music records a couple weeks ago. Um, this is the one with Heard on it. Um, let's see. Bridge Over Troubled Water, I Hung My Head. Uh, Personal Jesus. Um, Danny Boy, Desperado. I, there is not a bad. Streets of Laredo. Um, I think this is the best of um, the American Records albums. Can't recommend that enough. Let's see. Next up, I, I just pulled this out. Um, I'll talk about this in a future update because I ran across an original pressing of this, but uh, gave this another spin. Uh, the Nick 13 album. Again, I'll talk about that in a future update when I talk about the original pressing. And then last but not least, what we're listening to in the background and his new album here. Um, we're listening to Meta Modern Sounds and Country Music from Sturgill Simpson. I'm kind of getting ready for his concert. I'm going to see him this coming up weekend with uh, Tyler Childers. Really looking forward to it. Um, also finally gave this a spin. This is Sound and Fury from Sturgill Simpson. Um, this one is the Vinyl Me Please exclusive. I think there were a thousand of these. <coughs> Maybe 1,500. This is number 604. Again, these are going for 70, 80 bucks now. It, it's crazy. Um, such a great album though um so this is not a country album um sturgill simpson he wrote this these were country songs that he wrote and then i guess netflix came to see him about doing an anime uh, movie um that was japan inspired um, i haven't watched it yet it is on netflix um and this is the soundtrack to it um, i do look forward to hearing it um I came into this knowing that it was not country music. I had already heard a couple of the songs, so I wasn't, you know, a lot of people were shocked by it and, and were upset by it. I think that's all silliness. Um, it's kind of, it's still Sturgill Simpson's voice. You've still got this, this deep country voice um, over some fuzzy uh, Melvins, fuzzy Queens of the Stone Age type um sound um i think it's really cool uh especially the i really dig the instrumentals on here um but uh i really dig this um if you're into that queens of the stone age um if you're a guy like me and i know a lot of you guys are that listen to country and metal country and hard rock um i think you guys will dig that if you're a traditionalist you're only into country music you're not going to like that at all so um that's just kind of where it sits but uh, that's it guys that's pretty much everything. Um, hopefully I'll, I'll have something else up soon. Uh, take care, BC.